Welcome to the virtual ethnography of the Walking Dead Road to Survival. What is the Walking Dead Road to Survival? Walking Dead Road to Survival is a mobile app that has been downloaded more than 10 million times. Uh, it is a game which can be played individually, but to be able to truly succeed in the game, a player must join a faction and collaborate with other players to help each other achieve more in the game. From a participant observer perspective, I originally began playing the game over a year ago for two reasons. First, uh, my first MET course got me interested in game-based learning, and I wanted to learn more about how these games work and create the intrinsic motivation to keep coming back day after day or even hour after hour, and to think about how to apply that in an educational setting. Uh, secondly, uh, I chose this game because I've always been an avid fan of the zombie genre and uh, the Walking Dead graphic novels, so I was already familiar with the majority of the characters. Uh, before this experience, I hadn't played any kind of digital game for a significant amount of time, probably since I was in high school and I have never been involved with any kind of online gaming community. There are three main chat functions to the game. Faction chat, global chat, and the inbox. The faction chat is where members of the same faction can communicate with each other in private from other factions. Uh, and the global chat is where all players can chat with each other uh, between factions. The inbox function allows members to exchange private messages between two people and is of an asynchronous format. Uh, and it is almost not worthy of mention as it is quite rarely used by the players, but more used by the game developers to announce uh, or sell new features. Uh, because of the limitations of these chat functions within the game, Many of the factions choose to uh, communicate using a different online messenger. Uh, the faction that I ended up playing with uh, choose to, choose, chose to use the Kick SMS Messenger app. Uh, I sought to learn what kind of culture can develop within a mobile app game setting, mainly in terms of behavior expectations of others that might manifest in a set of shared rules for collaboration. And how much this culture can lead to continual player engagement in an environment where there is no other motivation except success in the game. Uh, Judy Willis has explained how video games fuel the dopamine pathways in players' brains to keep them coming back for more. Uh, by providing a continual feedback while playing game levels which incrementally become more and more difficult and uh, how we should try to exploit this pathway as educators. Uh, there is one thing that she did not touch on and which was the cultural aspects of video games which require player collaborations to su achieve success in games uh, and how the social expectations within the game can also lead to increased engage engagement and, of course, intrinsic motivation to continue to play. So, what did I do? Research methods included over a year of participant observation, uh, as well as informal interviews with three members of my faction who are willing to participate in this study. Uh, I asked four basic questions. Uh, one, how does interacting and collaborating with other players increase your enjoyment in the game? Uh, do you think you would play the game as often uh, if there were no interaction with other players? Uh, do you consider any players in the game a friend? Uh, how is this different from real friends? And uh, do you feel any social pressure to participate in the game? So what did I learn? Uh, in general, uh, very few people use their real names within the game. Uh, but choose a call sign or nickname to represent who they are. Uh, this anonymous nature of the game has two major consequences. Uh, people build relationships with people whom they do not know the real name, uh, and uh, there are no noticeable gender or ethnic differences uh, or such type of roles because no one knows who is male or female within the game. Um, although it is interesting that uh, most people are referred to as he, uh, even when the gender is unknown. 
Upon playing the game for a month or so, uh, uh, within the events, I noticed one faction which did not possess players with the highest levels of reputation points, uh, but they would consistently rank much higher than expected in the majority of the events. Uh, upon playing against them, it became apparent that they had developed a game strategy uh, which they were following uh, that allowed them to succeed beyond uh, their individual levels. Uh, I reached out to this faction and I uh, asked to join and they accepted me. Uh, once joining the faction, uh, one can easily see that there is a definite hierarchy uh, within the game. Uh, there are leaders, uh, followers, there are seekers of advice or students, and there are of course givers of advice, teachers. Uh, the faction chat is mostly used for cordial greetings and to discuss the basics of gameplay uh, and is not too often used for any kind of personal conversations. Uh, as mentioned earlier, most factions seem to create a chat room uh, in an external SMS app outside of the game. Uh, my faction, I said before, uses the Kick SMS app uh, and this allows them to better send files, uh, hypertext links, screenshots, uh, share charts and pictures or doc files about better ways to uh, find or upgrade items such as weapons or characters. Um, and of course, this is often where the real personal chats about who we are in the real world uh, do, do happen. Uh, the global chat is a place where faction members seem to either recruit new members, uh, get recruited to better factions, uh, and of course, uh, taunt other factions uh, that they are competing against. Uh, in general, these taunts are uh, in good fun, but occasionally a player will take a, a step too far and uh, somebody does get offended. Another mention of particular cultural importance is that of the invention of uh, new vocabulary which have no meaning outside the cultural context of the game. Uh, as the game uh, can be played completely for free or you can purchase uh, in-game coins with real money, uh, there is a line between those who pay and those who don't. Uh, the majority of my faction are play, play for free players uh, and they have developed uh, two somewhat derogatory terms uh, for pay-to-play players, uh, these being coiners and wallet warriors. Uh, in one of the major weekly events, upon being destroyed, uh, you have the option of repairing your camp, which usually takes about 10 minutes. But players are also given the option to use coins to immediately repair their camp, uh, giving their whole team a better chance to win the overall game. Uh, factions with players who do this quite often have become referred to as coiners. Uh, and uh, usually uh, one of the players will warn us uh, about which players on a team are more likely to coin. Uh, yes, it is used as a verb as well. Uh, and then we will attack the players, uh, giving us a higher chance to destroy all the enemy camps first and win the war. Uh, wallet Warriors uh, refers to players or factions who have an extraordinarily high number of high-level characters or weapons, uh, more than could be obtained through the regular rewards of the game. Uh, both of these terms get used in a way to soften a loss or give the faction a reason outside of our control for losing. Uh, there is a somewhat feeling of pride within the group when we manage to defeat a faction which uh, we feel has a majority of coiners or wallet warriors. Faction players also develop rules for each other for expected achievement within the events in the game. Uh, the players who do not live up to their peer expectations will face being kicked out of their faction. The major findings from the interviews with the willing participants was that the social nature of the game adds a sense of realism uh, that does not exist in other games. Uh, one of the participants said it is more fun when you share uh, with other fun with other people. Um, games like Candy Crush uh, just does not do that because there is no one else but you. Um, all participants alluded to the idea that the interactive nature of the game makes for a much more enjoyable experience and that the development of relationships with others is definitely a major factor in maintaining their continued engagement in the game. Uh, all three stated that they believed that the other members of their faction were in fact real friends and often had discussions via Kick Messenger, uh, which were not about the game but of a personal nature. Uh, one even said like this, like, like this. If didn't think we were friends, we wouldn't be talking to you doing this right now. Um, all three did mention that the only difference between game friends and real friends was a lack of meeting in person. Uh, although one did mention that they found uh, out that one of the faction members actually lived in the same town uh, and had gone out for beers with him. So uh, 
it seems that an online community can result not only in real, but actual relationships. In McFadden's uh, article, Virtual Ethnicity, uh, she alludes to the idea that the internet does not necessarily make ethnicities or genders invisible. Um, but within this game, they are at least uh, very extremely well hidden. Uh, perhaps it is games like this that allow us to escape our ethnic or gender identities for a while and try on a new one. Without a doubt, the overall hierarchy, uh, the invention of new words, and uh, the development of a whole rule system are evidence that there is a development of a third culture which has developed within this cyber environment. We can see that players view this game as a real aspect of their life. Uh, and the social pressures from their friends have a strong effect on the continued engagement in the game. From an educational viewpoint, we can see how this could be applied in the design of online curriculum for e-learning programs. I did face some challenges upon taking uh, on this assignment. Uh, I was not immune to the social pressures and the cultural pressures uh, upon uh, continued engagement in the game. And I, uh, of course, did lose a fair amount of time uh, on a, what some might consider an unproductive activity.